Creating a new 3D plot plan by using OptiPlant is very easy. All you need is a paper plot plan with your area coordinates and rough equipment dimensions. Let us start by launching OptiPlant from ASD Pipe Router Suite. In this form, you can name the project. You can assign plant and building name. You can set the working units as feet or metric. You can set your coordinates. OptiPlant uses a neutral graphics engine which has been built for non-CAD users, so it is very user friendly. It opens up in the top view. On the right hand side, we have a library of pre-existing equipments and structures which can be used quickly to build a plot plan. For example, if I start by building the pipe rack, I simply click on the icon and click on the grid. This is a form that opens up for any object in the library. In this form, we have ID to name it, basic dimensions to size the rack. This parametric form for each object has been divided into primary and secondary dimensions. If the auto update option is checked on, on every change to the primary dimensions, the secondary dimensions are recalculated automatically to keep the symmetry. Now let us change the number of the frames. Let us give the spacing between the frames. Location. This is the center of the first beam. It's picked up the coordinates based on the mouse click, but it can be changed as follows. Elevation is by default the grade for any object. It can be changed to place an object within a structure. Orientation. It is very easy to change the orientation for a north-south versus east-west rack. Number of levels. You can change the number of levels, the top of steel of each level and the designation of the type of piping in that level, which can be process, utility or common. Standard cross section. If you are interested in pulling a structural MTO, we have added a library of standard cross-section to choose from for columns, longitudinal beams and transverse beams. You can change the color of any object or let it go with the default. Let's click on Accept. Now you can see it placed in 2D and when I change the view to isometric, you can see it in 3D. You can also see that there is an automatic access space provided to tell the router not to route the pipe under the pipe rack. For equipments, it is the same process. Let's add a pump. The first is the ID. Let's give a color and say accept. To place another pump of the same dimension, we can use the copy functionality. We can give the ID and the value to place it with respect to the relative positioning. This will place another pump of the same dimension with the relative distance entered. Now let's add a tower. We give in the ID. Here you can see that the secondary dimensions changes when you change the primary. Let's give in the coordinates. and assign a color and say accept. Now let's view it in 3D. In 
Another new feature is the ability to import equipment information from your equipment data sheets or old models or estimation systems or presser simulation systems. The file just needs to be in an Excel or ASCII format. In this format, only the equipment ID, type and primary dimensions need to be provided. The other information is optional. If no coordinates are specified, they will be inserted at the origin and then can be moved to the desired location in the plant. OptiPlant will read in the information and automatically build the equipments for you. Now you can see it in 3D. Let's view it in front view, in right view, Another new feature is the ability to reference in a 2D plot plan which you can use to quickly place and size the equipments by importing the 2D DXF. Some of the outputs from the 3D model include a notated plot plan, an equipment list, the DXF file for transfer to MicroStation or AutoCAD, and now a structural bill of material. So once the 3D model is built and a layout is chosen, we are ready to automatically route the pipes. The next requirement is to have a line list. The line list contains the connectivity information. It is a simple ASCII file, space delimited format, so can be easily created from any system. Now we have a line list template that is linked to the equipment file. In here, the unit code, the fluid code, sequence number make up the line ID. The template is linked to the equipment list and has the associated keywords in the pull down menus. The pipe routing in OptiPlan follows rule based nozzle system. For each and every equipment built in the 3D model, different nozzle locations are already defined which the user has to select in the start or the end type of the line list. Here you can see the tower with its different nozzle locations already defined in the system by using different nozzle IDs like HZ1, HZ2 and so on where HZ1 is 0.1 times the height of the tower. The user can change these nozzle locations at any time using this user friendly interface. Next. You can see the horizontal heat exchanger where two nozzles have already been defined by the system for the tube side as T up and T down and four other nozzles for the shell side as S1 and S2 for both up and down. Again, the user as per the requirements can further change these nozzle locations. All these nozzle IDs are available in the line list for the user to select the start or end ID. The user selects the equipment and the keyword from a drop-down menu. The template is also linked to the line list so the user can create a branch by selecting the line from the list in the pull-down for the header and its associated keyword branch. User can also specify whether a line starts or ends at a battery limit by selecting a pipe rack location and using a keyword battery. Line specification like nominal diameter can be filled in. Spec is expanded in the pipe spec or dat file which I will show you next. The insulation can be provided or minus 1 means the router will calculate based on the temperature. The service type of the pipe needs to be given. The temperature or the pressure fields are optional. Let's save the entry. The next step will be to enter the components for the lines. You can add the components for any line through the component list template. This template is linked to the line list and lists all the line IDs in the drop down menu. You can select the line ID and then the component that needs to be placed during routing. Let me select the valve here. 
the walls can be of these different types. These walls can have either manual or motor operability. Then we can also decide if the wall can be placed at the start or the end. Now we can also locate the wall by giving the exact coordinate in all the three directions. Similarly, the other components like T's and reducers can also be added for the lines through the CLS template. To route the pipes, we follow the full batch route. The pipe routing process in full batch route is divided into four steps. The first step is define environment. This will load the 3D model environment into database. Second step is in input generation. This will read the line list, equipment list, component list and the data files like pipespec.dat file and checks for the input and generates the report. Third step is creating the batch file. You can select the lines that you want to include in the batch. This is based on the user's choice. So you can run all the lines or selectively choose a group of lines to route. Once selected, you hit auto sequence. This is where the program automatically sequences the lines in terms of material cost, diameter and temperature. Basically, it routes your most expensive or critical pipes first. However, at any time the user can override this and specify which lines to route first. When you have created the batch, you can start the batch by clicking on submit. The batch created by the user is also checked for any errors and is reported in the batch check report. A batch of 100 lines takes about 6 minutes. As it is routing, it actually routes each line several hundred times and then selects the best center line based on cost, meeting all engineering constraints and meeting basic stress conditions. Here you can see the pipe routing has already started after loading the 3D environment data into database. The batch routing is complete. Once the batch has finished, the pipes gets automatically inserted into the 3D model for viewing. Here you can see the plant layout from different angles. Now let's view the different pipe routes. This is the routing configuration that takes around the pump with the intake distance of 5D and with the clearance height of 2.5 meters, which can be changed at any time. These are the typical air cooler lines that are coming out of the four air coolers and getting connected to the tower. Now let's view the pipes running in the pipe rack. These are the pipes running in the pipe rack. Now let's view the components. This is how the control wall will look. This is how the reducer is shown. Once the lines are routed, you can then go on to extract an empty report. You can generate the MTO for the center line length which includes the length required for the fittings or the MTO for the actual length that does not include the length required for the fittings. You can either extract a line by line summary or a total plan summary that is spec wise or can extract a material wise summary. 
You can even include remarks and cost in the MTO. You can give in the units to generate the MTO report in. This gives you the location of the plant with respect to the total area for the project. You can also generate the MTO for only a specific area by giving in the coordinates here. The MTO report can be generated in Excel format as well. The MTO report will give a breakdown of part types, for example, number of elbows, branches, and other components. It will also show how much of the pipe is a rack segment. This report is in ASCII format, so it is very easy to customize for use in in-house costing applications. The DXF can be generated for the entire piping model. With and without the pipes. Which can be further opened up in MicroStation and AutoCAD. The piping model from Aptivland that was DXF'd out can be viewed in top view and 3D views in AutoCAD. Another feature is the ability to generate the isometric drawings for each and every pipes routed in Aptivland with the help of this plant raptor option. The pipe center line from ASD OptiPlant can be further taken to PDS and PDMS for detailed engineering. 